Last time we saw the directional derivative. along a direction v at a point x0, and it looked like df dx1 at x0. So we formed this vector, or this row vector, and we multiplied it by v1, the direction, vn. So very, very simple formula for the directional derivative. And we had a more compact form by saying it's the dot product of this vector with my direction that I want to take the derivative along. But we notice that this term is going to show up no matter what directional der direction I choose when I fix x0. So this guy is so special that we're going to have to give it a name. But we need to understand what exactly this guy really is. So let's get an example. Again, our simple example, x1, x2 is equal to 4 minus x1 squared minus x2 squared. But now to make this example a little more reasonable, let's uh, divide this by a really large constant, say, uh, 100. So that's a really large constant. But in order to graphically display what comes next, we have to do this. Well, we can easily compute the partial at each x1, x2. And we can form a vector from the partial derivatives at any x1, x2. So df dx1 of x1, x2. df dx2 of x1, x2 is equal to negative 2 x1, x2 divided by 100 because we have that 100 sitting out there. So what would happen if we draw some level curves and looked at what these what these vectors look like at particular points, right? So if you look at it, uh, the gradient or the this this vector, which we'll call the gradient, and you'll see kind of why we'll call it the gradient this, direct, this uh, direction is going to be exactly in the direction of x1, x2. So I plug in x1, x2, a point somewhere in here, and then I'm going to get negative twice. So I, I take a negative of that, so I flip it over the 0, and I divide by 100, and I get something. So at here, I'll get 4 over 100. So that's the level curve there. Um, and I've got, what do my level curves, of course, look like? They look like circles. So I've got a level curve here, I'll draw one there, and say i got a level curve out here, out here. So these are all circles. And when I plug in this, well, I get negative whatever. The, so if I have a vector here, I get negative that vector, and then I multiply it a little bit. So the arrow will be pointing exactly towards the origin wherever wherever I place it. So I'll look at where I come from, and then I point exactly along that direction, and I just have to scale it a little, right? It's scaled a little because of that 100. So you draw this nice, fun diagram where I'm just, every, every single point points basically right back to the origin along, along the line that connects the origin to that point. And the same thing with this circle. I'm gonna all all these vectors are gonna point from their point back to the origin along that line. So what does this tell us graphically? Well if we view this as a map and topography, right, this is the top of the hill, right? Because this is a remember if you draw this thing, it looks like a parabolic hill. And the top is going to be at the origin. Right, this is what this thing looks like. It's a nice parabolic hill. So this is telling us that we should go up this hill. This is telling us exactly how to go up the hill, right? If we go, um, if we go orthogonal to these directions, roughly, if we go or go orthogonal, then we're just going to be walking. We're going to be walking around the hill in the circle, 
and we're not going to change our elevation. This tells us exactly how to change our elevation to increase it the most rapidly. Right? And that's really what the gradient is telling you. And we call this guy the gradient. So this is the gradient of f from r2 into r1 at x1, x2. And we can only compute a gradient, we can only compute a gradient vector if we have a scalar output for this function. So it's a one-dimensional output. And if, and we, we're going to write a very, uh, since this is special, we're going to have special notation for it. And we'll call this nabla term f of x naught is the gradient of f. at x naught. And so my directional derivative in the direction of v is then just uh, nabla f x naught dotted with v for whatever v is the direction. And if we notice this, remember this is a uh, this is roughly a uh, the norm, well, this is exactly the norm of this guy times the norm of this guy times the cosine of the angle between them. And so the cosine is going to be maximal, right? The cosine is going to be 1 if v is a multiple of the gradient. So if I move exactly along the gradient, then I'm going to maximize this directional derivative. And what is the derivative telling me? The derivative tells me the change or the slope of a function. That's what, that's what makes the gradient so interesting. And so let's get an example real quick. Again, we have our Cobb-Douglas production function. 3 fourths and 1 fourth. So we can compute dq, dk, dq, dl, both the partials, and we just put them in to one vector, k to the negative one fourth, l to the one fourth, k to the three fourths, l to the negative three fourths. I'm running out of room here, but you get the idea. And we can compute at a particular point, del q of 10,625. If you plug those numbers in, it gives you 1.58. And what's, what's the picture, roughly? Well, I basically draw my level curves like I did last time. Draw my level curves. And so I've got maybe a 625 here. So this is not exactly to scale. 10,000 here. And I've got something over there hitting. And remember that the Cobb-Douglas is going to look like swoops when I take these curves, so this is my k direction and my l direction. And then I, as I take the different curves, I get another, I get another iso quant. And this is going to point exactly, so if I look at this, these are, these are ever increasing uh, fixed q quantities. Uh, and if I fix this, this tells me exactly how to move up this hill in the fastest way. So this tells me if I want to increase my production the fastest possible way, I want to simultaneously increase k and l in this proportion. So I want to increase q by 1.5 units and l by 8 units in order to increase this the fastest possible way at this point. 